This video is about signaling lying on your back with a signal mirror with the sun behind you. When you're signaling to the sky with the sun behind you, it's sometimes convenient to lie on the ground. However, and this is shown in the 1985 U.S. Air Force Survival Manual. However, uh, despite the diagram in that manual, you still want to keep the mirror as close as possible to the line between your eye and the target. If you're using a mirror with a retroactive reflective aimer, as John McCann recommends in his signal mirror article, and I do too, you'll want to be looking through the center of the sighting hole to see the glowing red dot, uh, sorry, glowing dot uh, produced by the retroflective material uh, in the aimer. The mirror I'm holding right now is a 2 by 3 inch mil M 18371E signal mirror. This is the type issued to U.S. military forces. You'll notice that even though it's uh, just after dawn and the sun is coming in nearly horizontally and nearly directly behind me, I have no difficulty holding the reflected light from the mirror on the target. In fact, I can even, by tilting my head, I can even follow the aiming indicator uh, towards the sun quite a bit. In fact, uh, out of the view of the camera, in fact, out of the window uh, that the sun is coming in. I have three targets on the ceiling. One directly above me, the red one. I have the blue one I have the blue one that is 30 degrees further. And I have a black one that is 45 degrees away, an eighth of a circle. The retroflective aiming dot uh, starts to go away the further you are looking from the sun. It's good out to about 135 degrees from the sun. That's one and a half quarter circles. If your target is, and that is, uh, where that uh, target is there. Uh, if the sun is further from your target, or if you're using a mirror that doesn't have a... Uh, retroflective sight, you're going to want to use what John McCann calls the alternate aiming method or some other uh, variant. Uh, the method he suggests, which is uh, much written about, is that you uh, put the reflected rectangle of light from the mirror on your fingers and center the target between your fingers. Now, uh, and he says in his article, you want to keep the mirror, your eye, and the fingers in nearest line as possible, which is correct. Uh, but you actually, the reflected rectal that light is actually uh, smaller than the gap between your fingers uh, by quite a bit at distance. Uh, so you want to be more precise about it. Uh, what I recommend is you put your, the mirror so that the center of one edge of the mirror is right above your eye, right next to your eye. I recommend looking towards the bottom edge of the mirror. Uh, John demonstrates and many people uh, use the top edge. Uh, I prefer the bottom edge, won't go into the details. 
Uh, but basically you put your eye right at the center and then you center the target between the two corners of the rectangle of light that are on your fingers uh, for the edge of that rectangle that's the same edge you're looking past. And I've got that geometry right about here. Now you'll notice that I'm a little bit off center on the target. Uh, that's due to parallax and you deal with that by basically uh, flipping the mirror uh, back and forth about the line perpendicular, well, about the edge you're looking at. And I'll take my fingers away and, and show that. Now, the rather unfortunate diagram in the 1985 U.S. Air Force Manual shows the user not holding the mirror next to his eye, they show him uh, holding it uh, away from him. Uh, for example, you could hold it above your head. Uh, can you see how close I get my head before my head gets in the way? Okay, I can get about that close. All right, uh, so I've now, I'm now looking with the same geometry. I have I am now looking at the target. The target is between the two corners, the rectangle light on my finger. Uh, but I'm not lighting up the target. In fact, let me move my fingers away just in case they're locked in the camera. You can see that uh, you can see that the light is quite a bit off target. And uh, just to uh, uh, illustrate further, if I reach up as far as I can above my head, and then once again set up the geometry so that the target is midway between the corners of the rectangle light on my fingers. And uh, uh, once again, the light is even further uh, away. So, uh, for goodness sake, uh, put the mirror so the center of one edge is right next to your eye. I like looking through the bottom edge and center the rectangle of light on the target using your fingers to find the corners of the edge you're looking next to and then just tilt the mirror uh, back and forth across your fingers to do that. Now, uh, just like with the retroflective aimer, uh, you can do that. You can do that. Uh, when you're closer to the sun, and you can do that. Just get this lined up here. When you're hello, there we are. When you're further from the sun, and even further from the sun. One thing you may notice is uh, above and beyond all the other annoyances, uh, when you're using the B finger method with the sun behind you, because the direct sun is on your fingers as well as reflected sun, it can be a little hard to find that, um, find that rectangle light on your fingers. But I can. Uh, I'm going down to the wall. This may be outside the camera field of view, probably is, uh, but I can use this method. Uh, I'm pretty low. Uh, when the sun is uh, further, get back to the demonstration angle. One nice thing about <laughs> signaling straight up is because my fingers are shadowing their lower surfaces, I can get a nice clean rectangle light uh, on my fingers. And that's also true when you're using the V finger method and uh, signaling towards the sun because the sun's on the other side of your fingers, you can see the rectangle light pretty well. Uh, but again, please, please, please uh, get a signal mirror with a retroflective aiming aid. They're far more effective uh, to aim when the sun's within the 135 degrees. Uh, still, 
still helps to learn this method as well to handle uh, the other case.